What's going on guys, uh, Gronix here and welcome back to the Pig'em Cruise week 3. If you guys uh, did not know, last week I wasn't here to do, or I was here, but I was feeling really, really under the weather and I had a lot of stuff going on last week so we didn't do one. But we are back this week, we are joined by the wonderful Zillix Ayla. Hello, all of you. What, what, do you, what do you call your viewers? Are, the are, they, are they your little Aerons? The Agronites. Oh, the Agronites? I think I think little Aerons is better. That's, that, that sounds <laughs> gay, dude. If you guys um, enjoyed this video, uh, obviously go over to Zillix's channel, uh, check him out here. He's a GBA analyst, so that's fucking Ooh, insane. Man. That's crazy. And uh, go over and check out his battles. He'll actually will be uploading his battle against whoever he's playing. I actually don't know off the top of my head. He'll actually craft. He'll, he'll have his battle against craft up. And obviously I'll have my battle against uh, Zen, so stick around for that. So we're going to go through all the games that are taking place this week. We're going to talk to him. Um, one by one, and we're going to give our thoughts about it, uh, what are going to be the, the scary things that people have to look out for, and basically what our genuine, uh, or genuine ideas are on the game. So Zillix, are you ready to go? I am ready. Alright, so we're going to start off with Doruk versus Farouk. Uh, I believe I'm going I'm to call it Farouk, I have no idea how to pronounce the name, but Farouk I think yeah, is yeah, it's Farouk. good enough. So, uh, starting off, uh, Farouk's and Doruk team are on the screen. And uh, we lost to Doric last week uh, because I couldn't beat his Celesteela Lomomola core. Uh, but I feel like Farouk has a pretty good chance to do that because he has a very, very unique team. Um, you know, a lot of uh, offensive mons like Charizard, Greninja, After Ninja is very, very hard to stop. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, Zillix, do you have any idea on what you want to say about this game? So, something that I see right away is... Both of the big walls, being Celesteela and Almamoa, can both get trapped and killed. Yeah. Celesteela can get trapped by the little Magneton thing, mm -hmm. and I don't think it dies, but it's definitely going to be taking a lot of damage. And the Almamoa can get trapped by the uh, Delmize, if it's played correctly. And I don't oh, think I Almamoa that, wants yeah. the 1v1 of Delmize. That's very true, very true. Um, there's a few threats like uh, Darmanitan. Can kind of just click flare blitz against for Farouk's team, so I'll have to look out for that. Um, and in the same vein, you know, if the Charizard gets up a few Dragon Dances, it could be over. So it's definitely going to be a very, very interesting game. Uh, I really don't know who I would call to win this game. Uh, it really depends on the six that they bring. Uh, who would the you Ash rate? Ninja switch ins are limited. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's true. Who would you rate in terms of their offense being better better than their opponent's defense? Would you say Doruk's offense is better than like Bronzong and, you know, Ferris seed or something, or because I say I think I, for Farouk is a slight better matchup. I think. I think yeah, I think Farouk is a better matchup if he's able to trap and kill those defensive mons. Because if Almamol is dead, nothing switches into the combination of Charizard and Greninja. Yeah, and because um, at that point the only Greninja switch in is maybe Roserade, yeah, like yeah. really specially defensive. <laughs> yeah, he. Does Farouk have a sorry? Does Dork have a single water resist other than Doug? Uh, Alomola, but yeah, that, that that might get trapped. I don't so, think so. That's gonna be a pretty pretty tough. Oh, the Roserade, but the Roserade as well, of course. But let's um, speak to fire. And obviously, you know, Mudsdale is a great check to Magneton if he runs like Shedshell and Celesteela, but then he has Delmise. Uh, Farouk does that just walls the Mudsdale, so it's it's kind of interesting. Um, yeah. I do think that if Dora can get the Darmanitan in and you know start flare blitzing stuff, it's gonna be tough for Farouk to do well um but it's gonna be interesting um i don't know who i'd call to win this game uh oh, dude i don't i don't know uh i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it a, a, a 2-0 to farouk um i don't know why but i feel like their his offense is a little bit too aggressive for daruk or doruk sorry Daruk. yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna lean farouk as well just because like darmanitan doesn't take water shark and well yeah. Uh, and that's pretty much a free battle bond. And if um, if Farouk gets uh, uh, rocks up, Doruk, Doruk is no way to get rid of them other than Armaldo and Turtonator, which if he brings one of them or both of them, then he has to drop either Buzzwool or Rabambi or Mudsdale, stuff like that. So I think the, the matchup leans slightly in Farouk's favor, but it's going to be interesting to see how they play it. Uh, do you want to say anything else, Zillix, before we move on? I think it's going to be tough for Doric, but it's definitely possible with uh, the right sets and the right mindset going in. Definitely, definitely. It's going to be an interesting game. Uh, moving on, uh, we have... Uh, I'm going to have to get Zillix to find it. We're Demonic versus Yodler. I'll just give yeah, him just a moment to find it. But um, 
this is definitely a, a funny one. I believe da Demonic is 0-2, I believe. Yeah. Uh, he's in the same boat as me. And uh, Demonic, he hasn't been playing uh, too badly, honestly. He hasn't played too badly. He's made a few plays here and there that really cost him a lot, especially in your game with him. Um, but he hasn't really been playing too badly. I think it's just in prep. He's I, th I think he's very limited by his draft. And that too. I feel like his draft really lets him down. Um, and Yoler is definitely... I feel like Yoler is one of the best drafts just in terms of how balanced his team is. There's no nothing that stands out as really, really bad or a big problem. I feel like his team is very, very uh, well balanced. And Demonic is definitely going to have a problem with Yoler's team. Uh, I can definitely see... Stuff like Excredible is obviously always a problem, and his only real switch in is Kofag and Gastrodon, but they still take way too much, and have, you know, Kofag has no reliable recovery as well, which doesn't help. Um, it's just a really, really tough matchup for Demonic, to be honest. Uh, do you have anything to say? I think if we see a cool Hydreigon set and also a powerful Lucario set, those two Mons can break through Yodor's defensive core. Yeah. And... If he can get them in reliably from either, you know, like Volt Switches from the Minetric or however he gets them in, whether it's like sacking them on and then bringing them in, you know, he can break through the Umbreon, the Jellicent, the uh, Gramble, Hippowdon doesn't take special attacks well, yeah. uh, Shaman doesn't take too well to maybe like a boosted Ice Punch from Lucario or like a Fire Blast from Hydreigon, yeah. so... It'll be interesting, um, but I definitely up, uh, think Demonic's on a back foot. Yeah, I mean, actually, we haven't even brought up Volcarona, which if you look at the draft, their drafts, one Quiver Dance could spell the end for Yodler if the extra is weakened or dead, stuff like that, with the Heracross. Actually, even if it is Scarf, the Quiver Dance will negate that. Um, it could be over for Yodler, so I think that's definitely one of the things that Yodler have to look out for the most. And uh, Demonic will just have to find a way around that extra, like you said, the Lucario, maybe with the Vacuum Wave, could be interesting. I believe Gallard gets Vacuum Wave as well, but that's not really interesting. It does, yeah. Oh, it does, yeah, but it's not uh, great. But It's not that great. If it got Mach Punch, that'd be cool. But If it got Mach Punch, you know. he'd be in a pretty good spot. But I definitely think the uh, Yodler's chances definitely outweigh Demonic's. I'm going to give it a, a 3 out to Yodler. I just I don't really see Demonic being able to break all of his walls while still being able to check Excadrill and like Haxorus, which we haven't even talked about Haxorus. Haxorus, if it gets him a Dragon Dance, you know. So, I'm gonna what give do? it a... Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. What do, do? What do? <laughs> I mean, ditto, but that's the thing. True. If true. he has the right ability. But if he brings Granbull, he just swaps that back in. Yeah. So, it's, but, kind, uh, of, it's kind of a weird matchup. It's interesting. Uh, what would you give the? Do you want to give a score, or do you just want to give like uh, who do you think is gonna win, or what they need to look out for? I think, I think Yodor might have it, but I think it's going to be very close. Yeah. Unless I... like a crazy sweep happens with Volcarona, or potentially the Haxorus, or like a Scarf, uh, Heracross, Moxie sweep, even or a Sand sweep. There's there's a lot of potential sweeps that could happen here, so it's it's kind of hard to to say which one, but I think Yodor might have it by a bit. I definitely could see this game being kill for kill. Like, yeah. every few turns, like, Yodler have to sack this, then go into this, get a kill. Uh, Demonic sacks this, gets a kill. Uh, I could definitely see that. I could definitely... I, I gave it a 3 out of Yodler because if Yodler plays it correctly, stuff like Jellicent and Umbreon might not be able to die. It's simply. Uh, he might be able to use it correctly because Jellicent's checked by Hydreigon, but then Umbreon sits in front of Hydreigon, that's U-turns of Lucario. So it's just that kind of weird matchup. Uh, it's going to mm -hmm. really come down to how they play, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. So we'll move on um, to uh, me versus Zen. Uh, I'll give Dilix just a moment to find it. Yeah, I got uh, it, I got it. I won't say too much on this game. Obviously, we <laughs> drop Lele for Tapu Koko, which I'm sure a lot of people would be like, what the fuck? But I'm actually really, really happy with that trade. I've used Tabu Coco in two different leagues, two different seasons. I know how to use it, how not to use it, what I'm doing with it. And I'm not saying it's going to, you know, flip the team upside down, but I do prefer it. And uh, I won't say too much on this game. Zen is a great player. Uh, I believe he's 1-1 one one, or 2-0. Oh. Is he one, Which one is Oh and 2 Is he really? Yeah, didn't he oh. lose the Cup 2 and then Farouk? 
Oh, we lost a first. Oh, I didn't know he lost a first. I, I thought he played someone else and won. Never mind. I think it differently. So, yeah, Zen is in the same boat as me, actually. So, we've actually both really desperately need a win here. Uh, so, Zillix, I'll let you take over it just in case I spoil anything. Oops. You know, I don't want to. So, um. Yeah. I think that. I actually didn't know that you dropped Lele. That's, that's news to me. I, I didn't see that yet. Yeah. But, um. It'll be interesting because Zen has steel offense. And you're only like on paper, your only switching is maybe Empoleon mm -hmm. to some of these things. I think Mawile can really run through if it gets boosts, which we did see him pass boosts week one. So uh I don't know, I think I think I'm gonna have to give it to Zen by just a bit. But you can outplay him with with Coco if you don't let like things like Trick Room go up or potentially like stopping uh baton pass boost in the mall while even a scarf Jirachi could put in a lot of work so it, it'll be interesting but uh i think zen has it by a bit mm -hmm. yeah it's definitely it's gonna be tough um obviously mega mall is scary but the thing is about zen's team that i personally feel is that once mall goes down there's not much else on his team same with me and Leia, which is why i'm glad i got rid of Leia. uh his team kind of depends too much on Mowell, so we'll have to see what happens with it. It's definitely going to be a weird one, um, and that battle will be going up very, very soon uh, this weekend, or maybe even before then, so definitely stick around for that. But um, yeah, it's going to be cool anyway. Uh, we're going to move on uh, to uh, Cub 2 versus Joey. Uh, this is definitely a cool one, because Cub 2 is, in my opinion, one of the best offensive cores in the league right now in Thunder, Therian, and Infernape. That is a really, really nice core. And the matchup is pretty weird between Joey and Kubju. Um, you know, he has stuff like Kubju has stuff like Mew that can taunt stuff, Willow has like stuff like Registeel or Matisse. But then Joey has stuff like Mega Pinsir that can pretty much run through Kubju's team. Like Kubju, does he have a single uh, flying resist besides almost there in Thunderous? Two off hundred months, he doesn't. So you know, it's gonna be weird, hard for Kubju to beat the Mega Pinsir, but. Um, if he can, I mean, I don't know what to think. Uh, Zillix, what do you think? Uh, we do see Prankster on Cubchy's side with the uh, Lipard. Mm -hmm. So there is that potential of slowing down that Pinsir. But yeah. um, other than that, if Pinsir gets up a Sword Stance, I don't think anything's taking a hit. No. Maybe a really bulky Vaporeon, but at that point, I guess you roar it out, maybe get up rocks and the Pinsir's dead. Uh, but then again, Joey also has, I don't know, like, Joey's team isn't too weak to Infernate, by the looks of it, just because, you know, Mantine, I guess, gets hit by Thunder Punch, but then you have Aromatisse, which can, I guess, gunk shot, I don't know, like, I feel like the, uh, the, the Infernate might suffer for move slot syndrome. Yeah, yeah, totally. And... I feel like he has to be physical to kill the Aromatisse, but then it's if he's physical, control. then he could wall it potentially with the uh, the War Turtle. I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be weird. It's going to be a weird matchup, but I definitely see Joey having a slight edge. I think um, Joey has it by a bit, but uh, I don't think out of the out of the race by any means. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Cubchu will definitely have to do something a little bit uh, weird. To win. Creative. I, 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 yeah, I definitely <laughs> don't think that he'll, he can bring standard. It, well, obviously not standard. But I don't think he can bring, uh, you know, just normal-ish sets. By the book sets. Exactly, yeah. and then win. It'll uh, be too predictable in this matchup. Yeah. Um, and Joey, you know, he doesn't need his walls at all um, to beat Cobb's team. He just kind of, he can just kind of decreate with the Tini. The, the Tini with decreate might even just get a kill every single time or you turn on the Vaporeon and go into like Pinsir and set up in it maybe if it can. I don't know. It's it's a weird matchup, but I definitely see Joey having a slight edge. I'm going to give it a 2-0 to uh, Joey. Yeah, I I can agree with that. I think if if Cubchu plays really smart, he can win, but it's looking like Joey's matchup here. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, Spike, or sorry, Stealth Rocks are really important, but Cubchu's only Stealth Rockers are Cobalion, Infernape, and almost there, which, I mean, Cobalion will just die to Victini's Decreate if he leads with that and stuff like that. It's just, it's a very, very tough matchup for Cubchu. Um, but, you know, 
hopefully we wish him the best. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Good luck out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We sent him off to war. Um, so moving on, we have uh, Jax versus Riolu. Um, now this is a very, very interesting matchup because Zygarde is obviously super duper scary in tier two. I don't know why, and um, it really does kind of get a kill against Riolu's team every single time. And Riolu doesn't have the best ways of killing it. You know, Manaphy's Ice Beam, of course. Um, but that's the only thing that outspeeds it that can truly one-shot it. So I feel like Riolu is definitely going to have a, a tough matchup against Jax. Uh, Zillix, what do you think? His only ground resist is weak to ground in this scenario, being Crobat. Yeah. So uh, that's a thing. I he mean, might even... Um... There's always Raindish Ludicolo defensive, but I feel like even then, it won't be able to take a <laughs> hit. How much does that take from, like, an Outrage? Oh, it takes a ton from an Outrage, but he has to predict around the Thousand Arrows. Right, yeah, actually, yeah, you're yeah. right. Actually, Outrage, he has no Dragon Resist. He has no lots of resists. Um, yeah. If like Jax there's... gets up one Dragon Dance with the Zygarde, it's just kind of over. Unfortunately. Uh, and that's without us talking about the rest of his team. You know. Selby runs through, too. Yeah, Silverly. Uh, Thunderous is scary. Um... Skarmory, you know, Beedrill cannot kill Skarmory, forces the Mana Fee or Blastoise to come in, you know, takes rocks damage or whatever. Stuff like that. I don't see Riolu having a lot of chance. I mean, if he can get, like, a Choice Banded Crobat in, or even a Nasty Plot set even, that'd be kind of cool if he brought Nasty Plot, Hidden Power Ice, Heat Wave, I don't know. But it's very, very tough for Riolu, for Riolu to win this game, and I'm going to give it a 4-0 to Jax. I think even a plus 3 Mana Fee doesn't 1v1 a Snorlax with the right probably set. Not. In the rain, probably. Um, in rain, yes, but in uh, yeah, without without it, rain, I, don't, I just, I don't know. I think, I said it before whenever I ranked his team, I would have liked to see Manaphy as the Z-Mon and not Blastoise, because in this case, if Manaphy had a Z-Crystal, it could do something. But, uh, I don't know, it just, it, I think it gets walled out here. Even like an AV Primarina. Yeah, actually, uh, Jax dropped his Mimikyu for Primarina, um, which you can see. And uh, Primarina, I mean, in the rain, has a great match against Riolo as well. Uh, Even Greninja. Yeah, it's just, I don't really see it. I mean, 4 is Prim, honestly, a bit generous. I mean, to be fair, actually, if Shuckle can get up webs, and Jax doesn't have a great way of getting uh, rid of him except for Skarmory, if Riolo can stop the Skarmory from defogging, Maybe we have something. You know, sticky webs plus stealth rocks, wear down some stuff. But honestly, I really don't feel like even then it would matter too much. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe if he had like an Encore Politoed set. Yeah, it's... it's... The Encore, the Skarmory, and the Defog, go Manaphy, get plus three in the rain. There you go. That's that's your strategy right there, but I don't I don't, I don't. Do you want to if... give a score or, or do you want to just say you think it's going to win? You don't have to give a score if you don't want to. I think uh, at least 3-0 in Jack's favor, if yeah, not more. I don't, but I don't, I don't really see. Uh, there's no way to get those walls down. Even stuff like Chansey is kind of setup fodder for Zygarde, so it's going to be tough. Um, so yeah, we'll move on. Uh, Riolu, obviously best of luck to both of you. Uh, hopefully Riolu can pull out something cool, but um, uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for sure. So we move on to the match that I'm looking forward to the most this week. We're looking at uh, Kraft versus yourself, Zillix. This is the match that I'm looking forward to the most because I feel like you're both very, very good battlers, both very good team bu uh, builders. I feel like you're both on the same level. Um, so it's really going to be down to, you know, how you guys prep and play. So, I mean, you don't have to say much on this game because obviously it's your game. You don't want to spoil stuff in case you have something crazy planned, like a dragon dancing fracture in the back. You know, you don't want to spoil that. So um, looking at the, the team matchup, you know, Kraft is a few things uh, that's scary for, for your team, like... Uh, you know, Garchomp's always scary. You know, can two hit KO, two hit KO most Mons with Outrage. Um, you know, Mons like Jolteon could be annoying. Um, but I feel like you have the slight edge. Uh, stuff like uh, Landorus is really, really scary against his team. Doesn't have great switch ins besides, I guess, the Sidui. Like it's not best set. I don't know. Um, stuff like Don Fan can sit in front of stuff like uh, you know Lola Muck and. Uh, Durant and stuff like that. So it's a pretty weird matchup. Um, 
but I do think you have this le and uh, also uh, Mega Venusaur sits into in front of a lot of his team stuff like Nian Shao, Typhlosion, Sijuai, Jolteon, Tapu Fini, Garchomp, kind of. Um, you know, I feel like you definitely have uh, the matchup here. Uh, do you want to say a few words on it, or do you want to leave it alone? I think uh, I, I have some strategy for this match because I'm kind of predicting what his strategy is going to be to counter my team and then playing around that. Okay. And I think if I don't misclick this match, I have a very high chance of winning. Yeah, well, misclicks are always scary, you know yourself. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I definitely, I'm going to give Ooh. it a 2-0 a, a to Zillix. I definitely don't think it's going to be a sweep because that, no, I don't think not at all. But, um, yeah, that's not happening. I, I definitely don't think that uh, it's going to be a, a, a very long game for some reason. I definitely feel like this will be definitely hit for hit. Punch for punch? Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know. Or Maybe. it'll be the exact opposite and you'll stall it. It could other. be, this could end up being like a 90 turn, 100 turn matchup. It could, <laughs> Mega Venusaur versus uh, Lolan Muck, swap back out and stuff. It's going to be very, very, uh, very, very challenging for Kraft to win, I feel, because... I mean, looking at his team, Kraft's only way of killing the Melodic is with Jolteon, which is hard -walled. Uh, He could run out of Bloom Doom on Typhlosion. Which is also hard-walled by the Venusaur. So it's right. it's very, very odd. And also, actually, running Heat as well. So Kraft is definitely going to have to do something weird here. Um, but we'll have to see what happens. I'm going to give it a 2-0 to yourself. Uh, but Kraft could easily win if he plays it right and brings a weird set he's brought some weird sets so uh yeah it'll, it'll be interesting to see what he comes up with uh to try and beat me cool so uh we're gonna move on uh to the second last game yeah second last game uh, we have infinite versus erasmus this is also another game i'm looking forward to um because we have two very very highly ranked teams in terms of their uh build and their teams um did i say teams ranked highly in terms of their teams you know what i mean so, Pegasus <laughs> uh, on Infinite's team has been doing fantastically. Infinite's used uh, his, you know, core of Sylveon, Salem, and Scizor very, very well, along with Brizion, my favorite mon, in draft league format. Fuck you, Infinite, for fucking sniping that piece of shit. So, it's going to be a lot of fun. And Erasmus is actually in both of our conference selects, so obviously we would love for Eras Erasmus to lose here. But 6 own, 6, six own, Nick. Infinite. 6 own. Lead with Salamence. You, you can do it, 6 <laughs> Uh, now, Erasmus has this strategy, which I won't talk shit on, but I personally feel like it's very, very cheap. The the, the, the Ninjask... I'll the talk shit pass, on it. It's bad. It's Don't do just, it. Stop doing it. It's very cheap. I feel it's very, very cheap. Just stop doing it. <laughs> it doesn't It doesn't make for entertaining games when you just swap in, into your Blastoise and just one-shot everything, because it's just kind of... It's kind of whatever. Um, but if Infinite can stop that, I mean, you know, that'll happen. Um, and I feel like... I don't know who has the matchup here, because Infinite doesn't have a great switch in a Blastoise. Uh, besides, uh, I guess, Sylveon. But F Sylveon, yeah. Even, like, AV on... Yo, wait. On... Seismitoad. That thing switches in every time. <laughs> well, I mean, Hidden Power Grass is very possible as well, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, also uh, Rasmus now has Latias, who we got last week, and Superior this week. So it'll be interesting to see if he brings Superior. Um, it doesn't have the greatest matchup. But it could be important for killing the Mamoswine, uh, the Seismitoad, uh, outspeeding stuff like Salamence and Dragon pulsing it. So it'll be interesting. But um, I don't know, really know who has the matchup here. Uh, what do you think? I think Infinite might have it just because he Watch can beat... Watch his switch in. Magirna switch in? Well, they're actually, that doesn't exist. Never mind, sorry. Uh, continue. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the thing with Magirna is it's kind of slow. It's not, like, speediest thing ever. But so is so, Infinite's team. Yeah, but things like Shandor, you know, he can run, like, Infiltrator to deal with, like, the the substitute passing with, like, a Scarf and Outspeed stuff and Oko it with certain moves. It's true. Fair enough, uh, yeah. I think Mamoswine can do some work towards things like the Latias, the Superior. Oh, yeah, Mamoswine is a great matchup, actually. Yeah, it. Uh, I mean, it does kind of get walled by the Mega Blastoise, but Freeze Drive does yeah, and I mean, something. it can't swap in like over and over again. So right, yeah, it's gonna be and very, Freeze Drive can also hit the King Jara. Yeah, uh, I think Erasmus's biggest. I mean, Pukumuku will will wall the Mamoswine. And 
I mean, we haven't really talked about Pikachu Mewtwo, but it's not bad against Re Infinite's team. I mean, Rizion Raichu will obviously do tons to it, but everything else really won't. I think so... the problem Infinite's going to have is so many of his Mons help this matchup, but he can only bring six. Yeah, yeah. If he brings the wrong six, yeah. you know, if he chooses, oh, I'm going to bring Chassot instead of Kamala, that could fuck him. You know, you never know. <laughs> uh, to be honest, Erasmus really only has six months he can or will bring. He brought the same months both weeks, except he swapped, swapped Zoroark and Slacking. Yeah, so that kind of just tells you. Um, I mean, I could see Kingdra coming to this game for sure. Uh, Kingdra like, doesn't do too much, though. But it doesn't really die to anything. Freeze-dry Mammoth. <laughs> freeze Shut up about your freeze. You have a boner for freeze dry mammoth run, okay, dude? All right, so I think I'm going to call it right now. I think Infinite does have the matchup to a certain extent, but as long as he stops the Ninjask cheap shit. And as as long as Ninjask doesn't pass, as long like, as Ninjask doesn't focus be a energy, bitch. plus two speed. Yeah, so I'm going to give it a, a 2-0 to Infinite. I think it will be, you know, very... Actually, 2 is kind of generous, to be honest. If Infinite does win, I feel like it will be a bit of a blowout. It's gonna be it's infinite's gonna win it's gonna be 1-0 scissors is gonna be on two percent hp i'm calling it now that's true that's that, fair enough that's that's what's happening yeah <laughs> nothing uh, else is possible the big thing for erasmus i think is gonna be killing that sylveon there's not much that can do it besides the Hyrna, which will just die to mama swine when it comes in for a revenge kill or something like that or even scissor could wall it if it doesn't have any power fire which it will but you know yourself uh so i'm gonna call it a, a actually a three out infinite uh, zillix what do you think Oh, I think Infinite has it by a bit. Anywhere between 1 to 3 oh, I think I think Infinite will have it. Yeah. Um, it'd be interesting. I mean, actually, does Superior outspeed his entire team? It does. Yeah, but he has priority. Priority Ice Shard, priority... And also, there's also the chance of a Scarf, Salamence, or Chandelure. Um, As well, yeah. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But uh, definitely going to be interesting. Um, we're uh, rooting for you, Infinite. Go out there and six <laughs> Uh So yeah, we'll move on to the final game of the week. Uh, we have Zach versus Swag. Um, Zach has made a lot of trades in the last two weeks. He dropped Drapion and Swoobat for Golbat and Psimian. He dropped the Golbat for the got the Golbat for the first week and Psimian for the second week. So uh, Swag hasn't made any changes. His team is exactly as strong as it was, and this is definitely a weird match because um, Swag has no real switch-ins to Tapu Vulu, besides maybe. Togetic, I guess. <laughs> um, which will probably die to two choice banded uh, wood hammers after rocks. Um, and also, if Zach gets up one calm mind to tweak soon, it could just be over. So, I don't really know what to think about this. Uh, so, Zilix, what do you think? Uh, I think I think this is the week for Special Entei with uh, Sunny Day, Fire Blast, Sword Beam, HP Ice. I think that uh. But even that gets walled by the heatran. Heatran, yeah. You, you have you'd have to run hidden power, uh, ground, but then die to Zygarde. I just feel like, yeah, we have to <laughs> talk about Zygarde. Zygarde just thousand arrows. Swag's entire team forces in the slow bro. Um, I mean, to be fair, slow bro's, slow bro's a little bit tough for Zach to kill if the Bulu does go down. Um, or he's able. Yeah, to but what's around. he doing to Mil Tank? Mil Tank just kind of sits there. I mean against the slow bro you could calm mind against it um i guess but if if it gets toxic like yeah exactly it'll be over then um and it's definitely gonna be i mean also swag doesn't have the best uh hazard removal so a fortress gets up a few layer of spikes and then stops the togetic from defogging that could just kind of be over there um it's definitely... Zach also has the magic bounce, so he might be afraid yeah. to set up webs. Exact act, very true. Actually, I didn't think about that. So, it's definitely a, a very weird matchup, uh, but I think it, Zach does have a huge advantage going into this game. Uh, he just has a few things that Z Swag can't deal with, uh, in general. Uh, so... Yeah, Zach also has a plus twelve differential on week two, which is. Does he really? He six out both weeks. Yeah. Who do you six out? Uh, Riolu and Yodor. Well, of course, Yodor. Fuck so. So, uh, <laughs> that is basically the uh, Thicker Goose for week three. Um, definitely a lot of weird matches uh, going into this week. A lot of matches that might mean a lot. 
going forward. You know, uh, I know Zillix game with Craft is going to be important. My game with Zen is going to be important. Basically, whoever loses that game is, to be honest, kind of out. I mean, I don't really see any way they can kind of make playoffs. I mean, we're not thinking about playoffs. It's, it's only week three. I mean, come it's on. It's only week three, but let's be honest. I mean, I don't know. So, that's basically it. Um, if you guys have enjoyed this, make sure to have you slam the like button down below first. Subscribe if you're not already. Go over to Zillix's channel. Check out his videos. Uh, he'll have the battle uh, against Kraft. We'll obviously have the battle against Zen. It's going to be a lot of fun. Next week, we'll have whoever on uh, again for picking for week four. And uh, next week is just as crazy with the matchup. So, definitely come back for that. With that being said, have yourselves a wonderful day. And bye-bye. Waiters.